it's not a surprise during Trump's remarks, he was trying to somehow pin this as some great Marxist conspiracy. But the fact of the matter remains that this is an individual who retained US national security secrets, nuclear weapons locations or you know nuclear site locations, sensitive materials and put our nation at risk. And frankly, you know, this is beyond just the Cuban community, the Latino community writ large in the United States also has a profound sense of patriotism and understands right from wrong and from understanding political persecution, knowing that this is not it. Yeah, look, I agree with her that it is not surprising the defensive moves that Donald Trump made after the arraignment. I didn't call necessarily specifically that he'd be going to a famous Cuban restaurant or whatever and Cuban exiles would be rallying for him. People who actually have experienced some form of political persecution, communities that have you know constantly faced and still face political persecution, like some members of those seeing this entitled spoiled billionaire like whining and bleeding about the most minimal potential moves towards consequences for the crimes that he totally willingly committed and then bragged about on tape. That just seems super weird. You don't have to extend sympathy to a guy like that. You could focus on the fact that you've experienced far worse. What do you think? It's 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 one of those things. Look, I forget who said it, it was on one of the cable networks. And they're basically saying, yo, he had many opportunities to then do these illegal things and then go back on it and they wouldn't have done anything about it. The first time that they said, hey, you have all these documents and classified documents that we haven't seen come forward yet. Uh, let us come and check it out. And they come in and check it out. If they clean the house and got rid of all of them, it would have been over. Even though it shouldn't have been, it would have been over, but he kept more. Then he talked about how he kept more. Then after talking about how he kept more, he said, find a way to keep more from them the next time. And the next time they come, make sure you hide more and make sure you try to make sure they never find this, that and the third. It was consistent. He was going downhill with this process of obstructing and keeping this, these, this information. And no one stopped to ask, why? What does he want these things so badly for? How much does he not want them to have it back? Mike Pence had it, Joe Biden had it. I think they said a, 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 a other former president, maybe the Clintons even had stuff, Obama had stuff, and they gave it back. Yeah, gave it back willingly. That having to be asked, but having to be rated. Um, that said, I do maybe disagree with AOC in a few further point that she makes. Take a look at this. This is a twice impeached president, but when we rewind and when we rewind the tape and look at Donald Trump's first impeachment, he used and was unafraid to leverage the power of the United States government in an attempt to engage in an extortion scheme in Ukraine. He went to the Ukrainian government, he and his team and engaged in frankly what we see as a conspiracy. And saying that he was willing to withhold and he was willing to hold congressionally mandated funds hostage in order to extract a fake political story about his political opponent, then now President Joe Biden. And I think from that history, and you see that same individual taking troves of documents, sensitive documents about the United States. I do not think we can rule out nefarious intent. I do not think we could rule out him trying to engage in transactional behavior, whether that be political or otherwise for himself. So I look, I don't disagree with the basic philosophy of that. We know that he has been willing to use his position in the government to try to extract personal benefits. That's not questionable at this point. The only thing I disagree with is like we we have learned a lot about how he held the documents, what he did with the documents, the nature of the documents. I am not ruling out the possibility that he would have been able to use it for like specific personal gain in terms of, you know, money or political benefits or whatever. But we we have not admittedly seen any evidence of that yet. He's shown it off to people. We've never seen evidence that he was showing it off to someone where it seems like the only interpretation is that he was gonna get something out of that. So I would just say that while she's not saying that he did it, she's just opening up the possibility. I think she's a little bit more convinced of the possibility than I am. And I know I disagree with Jenk about that too. He's much more convinced about that. I would just say it's already bad enough. If it's worse, it's worse, but we should see evidence before we assume that it's worse. 
Like, to assume so, but to speculate it, I think makes sense. So, and by the way, why don't you think he would do that? No, no it's not, I'm not saying he wouldn't. I'm just saying there isn't yet evidence that he did. I see. Well, I mean, if whoever's saying that he did explicitly like that, yeah, that's a problem. Um, but then again, there's a track record as to the reasons why he would, and I don't think you disagree with that. So yeah, it's 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 a bit of a fine line. I get it, but then to I guess you mean jump the gun rather than wait and see it could be yeah. dangerous. Yeah, that that's all I'm saying. That's all mm-hmm. I'm saying. Um, but anyway, uh, I'll, I think I'll she- make sure I tell ALC that to call off the <laughs> call the dogs. Uh, we'll look, I, I like that she was one of the people brought on to respond to this. I think that she had a strong response. She stressed how significant the charges are. And uh, I think presented that well. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want, with a range of co hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.